respiratory support was the most common intervention provided in pediatric critical care units. Recognition of the risks associated with invasive mechanical ventilation has led to greater use of non-invasive methods of respiratory support in specially acutely ill children such as including a high flow nasal cannula therapy, a continuous positive airway pressure and various other non-invasive ventilation methods. Now the optimal first line mode of non-invasive respiratory support for acutely ill children is not well known as yet. Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues Journal Club, your daily dose of health and medical news. I am Dr. Nandita Mohan and today I am going to talk about a very interesting trial which is a randomized clinical trial that was conducted to check the effect of high flow nasal cannula therapy versus a continuous positive airway pressure therapy on liberation from respiratory support in acutely ill children who have been admitted to pediatric critical care units. In acutely ill children, clinically accessed to require non-invasive respiratory support in a pediatric critical care unit, can the first line use of high flow nasal cannula therapy be non-inferior to continuous positive airway pressure in terms of time to liberate from all forms of respiratory support? Now let's look at the answer to this. Now this was the question that the researchers aimed to answer in their particular trial which was published in the JAMA network. The authors conducted a pragmatic, multi-center randomized non-inferiority clinical trial in approximately 24 pediatric critical care units among 600 acutely ill children aged between 0 to 15 years who were clinically assessed to require non-invasive respiratory support. The median time to liberation in the high flow nasal cannula therapy group was close to 60 hours versus around 50 hours in the continuous positive airway pressure group. Now in simple words, this met the criterion for non-inferiority. So of the 7 pre-specified secondary outcomes, 3 were significantly lower in the high flow nasal cannula therapy group. That included the use of sedation, mean duration of critical care stay and mean duration of acute hospital stay and the most common adverse event that was encountered was nasal trauma. The authors hence concluded that among acutely ill children clinically assessed to require a non-invasive respiratory support in a pediatric critical care unit, high flow nasal cannula therapy compared with continuous positive airway pressure met the criterion for non-inferiority for time to liberate from respiratory support. That's all for today. Stay tuned to Medical Dialogues for latest updates. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.